Gate 30 is part of the quarter of initiation, purpose fulfilled through mind. And with the Sun and Personality Gate 30, our feelings are of real vital importance. So the mind, its process of thinking, educating, conceptualizing, and explaining things, sharing, sharing the experience, sharing your imagination, sharing the journey, sharing the story. This quarter of initiation is where we wake up first. Remember, Kali is about bestowing moksha, moksha, which is liberation being able to liberate yourself from the mind's distortion. Kali's gates speak how, all of them, by the way, not just 30, but Kali's gates speak about how the distortion of the mind and its experiences of what it thinks it knows can really fuck up your emotions. I'm not kidding. <laughs> At least that's my experience anyway. So if you're born in the quarter of initiation with a purpose fulfilled through the mind's process, we fulfill our life and our purpose through mind. And this is where you go, well, wait a minute, hang on, hang on. This is me about five years ago. Wait a minute. You told me that my mind, I'm not to trust my mind, I'm not to believe my mind, and my mind is actually undefined. What gives? How the heck does that work? Your core essence lies between gate 13 and gate 2 on the left-hand side of that mandala wheel. Then this mind's process is how you are here to fulfill your purpose. So it's the process of the journey of life on the mental plane. This is where we begin with our entering into life. What it means to be alive in a form, if this is any of your personality, son, you're here to educate. You're here to share what it means to be alive in this form, in this precious one body that this one body in its one life has in this existence. This quarter of initiation lays the foundation to survive and thrive into the next quarter which is civilization, the process of building forms and structures. So again, Kali, the destroyer of false devotion. So with gate 30, purpose fulfilled through mind, your feelings are most important here. Again, it's educating, thinking, conceptualizing, explaining, and sharing feelings. The feelings here are about what may or may not happen and what actually happens when life steps in, despite the best laid plans of mice and men, there is an experience and sometimes fate. Yeah, the fates step in the way. Your experiences are driven by desire that is absolutely and utterly fated to meet the life's actual experience of the high wave and the low wave. This hunger, this longing, this yearning for a new experience right now can be obsessive. It can be fueled by every fantasy and every daydream and everything you could imagine under the sun, fueled by that pressure to have a new experience now, to feel things deeply in order to learn. And once you have that feeling, that experience that you imagine will bring you that feeling that you want, whether you get that feeling, whether you achieve that experience or not, the needle always moves to empty because what goes up must come down. And every interaction on the up wave, on the low wave, you get satisfied or not. You might feel dissatisfied with the experience. Oh, I had that experience and that wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. Remember to let go of the expectations here. Your expectations are what are trapping you in the experience of dissatisfaction with life. In order to balance these powerful energies that are alive inside of you, your core essence shines in the gate of desire. It may broadcast if it's defined consistently. It may be inconsistent and therefore you amplify the desires of life. But balance comes through surrender. 
And accepting what is, is the way to be materially successful. Third line. Don't fear the fate of what your life will bring. Don't be pressured to chase after this fantasy and that fantasy and that desire and that daydream. If your solar plexus is defined, you can only have clarity by waiting for patience, patience, patience. Patience is its own reward. Patience for the clarity, the movement of the experience to live life through you, to happen through you. But you can't control what actually happens. And when you act without clarity, trust me, my friends, I've been there, I've done that. You ride that tsunami wave of life and you make a spontaneous choice because you're excited, watch out because that wave is going to crash and your whole life may crumble if you do not have the integrity to honor your individual own authority, the patience with which you are here to digest life and to discern and ascertain whether or not someone, something, some experience, some need is right for you. Don't be so quick to try and make all your dreams come true. Wait it out. Sleep on it. You have all the time you need. There's no truth in the now. Truth reveals itself like a watercolor. If you were to look at the watercolor from the very first moment of it being painted, you wouldn't see much. But over time and with the deft strokes of the artist's paintbrush, you get to see this beautiful, spectacular wholeness of the picture that they creatively expressed for you and the feelings that are evoked when you see those colors. Accept your place in the larger pattern of life. Your feelings and your deep desires are here to be a gift. A gift not only for you, but especially to be shared with others. And if you're a projector, through recognition and invitation when you're emotionally clear. If you're a generator, through response after waiting out that wave, whatever your wave happens to be. If you're a manifester, to inform in order to impact with your emotional clarity brings the greatest peace. And for the reflector, the beautiful surprise and delight at what fate brings, I only wish you the best on this journey through life, my friends. Namaste.